Hello all. So in this section, we are going to start STL, that is Standard Template Library. It is a very important concept whether you talk about software development or you go into competitive programming. This is because STL is nothing but a library of templates. So we don't need to write everything from scratch. There are templates. We can just import those templates and use in our program. Like if we want to sort, then there is no need to write logic from scratch. We can just use a sort function and it will do sorting automatically. So this is the benefit of STL. So let's kickstart STL. Now let's start with what is STL. STL is nothing but standard template library. So this is the library that provide templates. We can understand templates with an example. So let's say you have a factory of toy making and you have 100 employees or workers to create those toys. Now let's say each worker will take one hour to create one toy. Now the problem with this approach is it is quite time consuming because each worker is taking one hour to create each toy. And let's say in a nine hour of shift, each worker will be able to generate or make only nine toys but you have a huge demand. Now there is one more major problem in this case is that workers might not be producing quality toys. So there might be defects in some toys. Your 100 workers are producing let's say 900 toys per day but 200 of them are defective. Then in that case your efficiency is going to hamper. So how STL help in solving this problem is that you have a molding machine. So you just need to put the raw material into the molding machine and the machine will automatically produce the toys. Now in this case, you are not only troubleshooting or solving the problem of defective toys, you are also reducing the workforce. You can easily run your factory with less number of employees with better quality and more number of toys. So this is the same benefit that STL provide. You don't need to write everything from scratch. So there is less chances of errors in your code. So that is why in industry STL is highly used. Now talking more about STL, it is a set of C++ classes that provide generic classes and functions and that can be used to implement data structures like list, stack, arrays, etc. and algorithms for searching, sorting and many more operations. You might not be aware of such data structures like list and stack, but we have already seen array in this course. Data structure is nothing but putting our data in such a manner that it would be easy to perform a particular operation on that data. So we have lots of data structures like list, stack, queue, arrays, heaps, graphs. So we would be covering this in upcoming courses. Now talking about algorithms, we have lots of algorithms. Let's say we want to sort our data in ascending or descending order or let's say I want to search a particular element in my data. So this is algorithm. Now there is one more thing here that is it provide generic classes and function. Now what is the meaning of this generic here? Generic means journal. Now what does this mean? It means with the help of STL we can do generic programming or we can say general programming with the help of classes and functions. It means we can perform operations onto our data irrespective of its type whether it is of integer type floating type double type care string or etc it doesn't matter now let's say we have this sort function now this sort function will not only work for a particular data type it will work for all these data types it means this generic programming will not differentiate data on its type. 
it will perform operation on to that data irrespective of its type so this is the advantage because let's say if we are creating a sort function then it might work for integer double or some particular data type but this sort function provided by the stl would be able to perform sorting on every data type that is why it is called generic or generalized so this is the reason why c++ is also known as generic programming language now let's see the formal definition of this generic programming enables the programmer to write a journal algorithm which will be working with all data type like integer float double or user defined as well now what is the advantage of it the advantage is it reduces code reusability we have just a single function which is able to perform functionality for every data type so we don't need to create that same function for each data type in this way we are reducing the code length also or we can say we are avoiding function overloading now going further stl is mainly composed of three things first is algorithm second is containers and third is iterators now let's understand each one of them one by one with the help of this diagram now first let's start with containers container library is a stl provide containers that are used to create data structures like arrays linked list trees etc now next thing is these containers are generic they can hold elements of different data types you can take an example of a let's say vector can be used to create dynamic array of character integer float etc so we have seen arrays but the problem with array is that it is of fixed size now stl provide a dynamic array that is vector now the benefit of this vector is that if you want to let's say add more data then it will dynamically or in the run time itself it will increase the size of vector and moreover you can put any kind of data whether you talk about character integer floating or etc so this was containers now stl provide number of algorithms that can be used for any containers irrespective of their types now we have different algorithms like sorting searching reverse max or min so on this data we can perform all these algorithm irrespective of their types pretty cool stuff right now going further talking about iterators iterators in stl are used to point to the container in which data is stored and iterator actually act as a bridge between the container and the algorithm now let's understand this with the help of an example let's say in container we have data 10 20 30 40 and 50 and we have a algorithm let's say we want to find or we want to search a element and we want to search 20 now this iterator is beginning as we know iterator is used to point to the container so let's say we want to start searching from the beginning so here we have iterator beginning which will search the element 20 and it will start from the beginning so this is the use of iterator it will point to the data so i hope this what is stl and in stl what are algorithms containers and iterators are pretty clear to you excellent